What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to this second R and Quant Finance tutorial series. Uh, today, we're going to be going over uh, the Performance Analytics Library, um, and that basically can just be summarized by going over uh, some portfolio functions we can apply in R. So if we create a stock portfolio, which we're about to do, we can extract some analytical measures on that portfolio. I have a presentation as well on my GitHub page uh, throughout this repository um, specifically for this tutorial series and all the scripts are going to be there as well. So that's gonna be linked in the description. So if you ever wanna follow along with what I'm doing, all the content is there for you guys, um, no problem. And uh, with that, we can get started. So what I will first do is import the necessary libraries. And if you don't have the libraries installed, you can always come down here uh, to the console and stay, say install.packages. And then whatever libraries you want to install, you can just go from there um, and put them in. They'd be put into the quotes that I have right here. So let's go up here and say library. And I'm going to use quant mod for data. And I'll say library performance analytics and we'll load those up okay and I just take control enter there for a shortcut to run those two lines so the next thing we're going to be doing is creating a vector of tickers so that's going to be just some the fang stocks I think so I'll do Facebook Apple Amazon and then Netflix and we'll assign some weights too so I'll do an equally weighted portfolio and I'll load that up as well okay uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get data for this portfolio so I'm going to initialize a variable called portfolio prices and I'll set that as null originally but we're going to populate it with all the columns of data that we want uh, from Quantmon. So I'll do a simple for loop so for ticker in tickers what do we want to do? We want to refer to the portfolio prices object and what we're going to do is combine all the columns from uh, get symbols yahoo to our portfolio object there so we'll say get symbols yahoo okay and we'll pass in the ticker and we need to set a start date too so i'm just going to do 2016-01-03 um, just a random start date and we need to specify periodicity so we'll do daily data and we'll say auto dot assign equals false and that's just pertaining to our environment so uh, we're going to see uh, we're basically not going to have to specify uh, an environment in this case uh, so what we're going to do now is take the closing price in the data um, and, and that's just going to refer to the closing price column so comma number four is uh, basically just saying okay out of the entire data frame of open high low and close I only want the close column and I'm going to combine that into my uh, portfolio prices object right here so uh, let's run that for a sec and see what we get and we'll wait it shouldn't take that long um, it's pretty fast usually and you can see right here we have our XTS object which stands for uh, extensible time series and we have it from the first uh, or the fourth of January 2016 all the way up to what looks like um, yesterday so that looks okay and one thing we can also do is check if we have any missing data um, and that's kind of important especially if you're using any machine learning models or you're using 
um, anything that's going to be reliant on uh, your data actually validating. So you can check that by saying uh, is NA and then portfolio prices. Okay. Um, and I think I just. Oh, I actually believe the function has a capital and then it's plural. And we have no missing data, which is terrific. So we can move on. And I'm also going to create a benchmark. So uh, in the United States, we use the S&P 500 as a benchmark typically amongst retail investors. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so I'll just do benchmark prices and that's going to be equal to get symbols yahoo and i'm just going to copy and paste this oops okay um that looks fine i'm going to pass in carrot gspc and that just means the s p 500 direct prices um, and I had to delete this right there and let's try that and let's also see if we have any missing data for the benchmark prices and it looks like we don't have any so right now we can calculate returns so uh, these are just going to be periodic returns for the time series objects so benchmark returns going to be equal to ROC, which means rate of change. And we also want to wrap that in NA.omit to omit any um, uh, returns that would show up as NA. In this case, the first return in the series would because there's no day before it. So we'll do ROC and then benchmark prices. And I'm just going to copy and paste that for the portfolio as well. And we should have our returns objects now, which are still XTS objects. And I'll go over here. So the ROC function, um, oh, sorry. I want to go to portfolio returns, yes. So the ROC function is just going to calculate um, the daily change in each individual column. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna save that. And what we're going to do now is, um, just calculate our portfolio values um, at the end of the day. So what that basically is going to do is uh, aggregate all the returns essentially and use the weights we provided to output the portfolio return. Um, so what we can do is say portfolio return. That's going to be equal to, and by the way, in R you can use this or this. Um, it, it really doesn't matter for this case. Um, so we can use return dot portfolio and then we can pass in uh, portfolio returns and um, I think we can leave it at that and we now have one column in this uh, time series object which are going to be our aggregated portfolio returns given our weights um, so that's a pretty useful function and that's in performance analytics any package or function you have a question on like let's say i don't know about return dot portfolio i can enter it um, and i can see right here uh, the description of the function and basically the arguments and uh, for example one thing i had a question of is if we are for the return using geometric returns and it looks like the default is true so I, I think that's fine there but just beware that if you are using geometric returns or uh, it, just make sure they're basically uh, consistent throughout so if you're calculating uh, using a rate of change function or using uh, like maybe a log return function over your data set make sure when you're doing it anywhere else in your script that they're the same because if, if you do it differently in two places that can get a little bit messy um, anyhow we can move on next to uh, actually calculating some metrics for our portfolio so these will just be a quick uh, this will be a quick overview on some of the metrics but it they're just basic um, metrics in I guess portfolio management you could say so uh, the first one is beta so what beta basically is and uh, I'll preface it with uh, you can reference the PowerPoint on my uh, 
uh, on my GitHub. And I might actually bring that up right now. Just give me one second. So guys, this is the presentation I put together for some of the metrics, uh, just explaining them. I'm not going to go into huge detail because it's going to get a little lengthy, but uh, just to understand what we're using here uh, and what we're going to be doing in R. So we're going to be using uh, the CAPM model for some of these calculations. And the CAPM model basically is just uh, a formula that is going to give you an expected return for a stock with the given value of risk, uh, or should I say asset instead of st uh, stock. Um, the the formulas right here you don't have to worry too much about the semantics of everything but uh, just know that uh, for a lot of the metrics in the portfolio analytics package we're going to be using that um, alpha alpha is a pretty standard metric it's a risk adjusted metric for uh, performance and it's basically uh, comparing your investment to an index and saying how much you beat that uh, other index or benchmark uh, in in layman's terms so instead of just reading from this uh, i want to kind of put it in uh, as simple of terms as possible um, and uh, a lot of people like to uh, extract it from the cap m formula as well um, uh, or use uh, jensen's alpha and that's another popular one we or i use jensen's alpha for the most part for any uh, sort of alpha calculations that i'm using and then beta, I think a lot of people know about beta. Um, beta is basically just a, a measure of volatility. So uh, the market has a beta of one. If you're above it, you're theoretically more risky than the market. If you're below it, you're theoretically less risky. Um, and again, uh, we can extract the beta coefficient from the cap M model. Um, and again, I'm not going to go crazy in detail of the mathematical aspects of it. Um, but uh, to finish this off, uh, the sharp ratio, which we're going to calculate as well, uh, that's another risk metric. Basically, uh, it's saying, okay, for every unit of standard deviation, how many units of return are you achieving? Uh, so essentially, it's it's you're saying if I invested in the risk-free asset, um, I have to be, I, you would automatically get uh, a certain rate of return because it's theoretically risk-free, right? Um, now. If you were to not invest in the risk-free asset and invest in a riskier asset, you would have to get compensated for that risk. And this metric uh, pretty much puts that into perspective. So it's all about risk and reward with this. Um, how many units of return am I generating for units of standard deviation I'm taking on? And it's a pretty simple formula as well. That amongst fund managers is pretty much the most widely used metric, um, in my opinion. So I'm going to bounce out of here and then go back to... Um, our studio. Okay. I'll expand that. Um, so yeah, just a super, super quick, uh, explanation on some of the metrics we'll be going over. Um, so I'll do cap M dot beta to start, and I'm going to pass in my portfolio return and we did a benchmark return as well. And the risk-free rate will use an arbitrary number, but we have to put it in uh, the frequency we're using for the data set. So in this case, we're doing daily, so that would be divided by 252. If we did monthly, it would be divided by 12. 252 represents the number of trading days in a year. So I'll try and calculate that. And the beta is 1.365 um, or 1.366, just about. And that makes sense, because if you look at the assets we have, they're fairly riskier assets, I would say. Um, now we'll also calculate Jensen's alpha and that's pretty much almost the same parameters. And we have an alpha of 9%. That's actually pretty good. Um, anything above zero means you're pretty much beating the market. So the last one that I'll do is the sharp ratio. Cause I think this tutorial is getting a little long. So we'll do portfolio return. And then we'll do the risk-free. And um, I think that should be enough. Um, I have to check the function documentation, but okay. Um, that's pretty much all we need um, for the sharp ratio. And it looks like we have... Um, we're looking for the standard deviation on the denominator. So we're looking for standard deviation sharp. So we have a sharp ratio of around 4%. That is again, not that bad. 
So guys, to round out this tutorial, we're just going to uh, calculate some uh, annual returns, and we can do that pretty easily by using table.annualizedreturns, um, and we can pass in our portfolio return, and I guess we can do uh, table.calendar returns as well. So these will give us a good idea of how we did on the year. So I think I... Um, I might have messed up that function. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at our returns up here. So we have an annualized return of 19.67%. Not bad. Um, and we can see we have our annualized standard deviation and sharp ratio as well. Uh, and we have our calendar returns down here too. Uh, and that's pretty useful to examine as well. So that just about rounds up this tutorial. Uh, this is just going over again uh, some portfolio metrics and uh, portfolio data and how we can extract some analytics from it with portfolio analytics. In future tutorials, we're going into uh, much more complex uh, topics such as backtesting portfolios uh, and trading strategies for our portfolio and also portfolio optimization as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please rate, comment, and subscribe and I will see you later. Bye-bye.